City. I'm Mary and I'm Maria and we're so excited you're here with us today. We're here to share some super exciting events that are coming up. Something I'm excited for is we're offering a Zoom prayer right after our online worship experience. Click the link in the online chat and you'll be able to connect to our Bridge City Zoom room to connect and pray with someone. Zoom room. I love that. <laughs> I love it too. I love that. Another exciting thing we have coming up is our spring semester of connection groups. Yay! I, <laughs> I love connection groups. It's how I met Mary. It's how I stay connected to all my friends. I highly recommend. So check out our website for a list of connection groups. Thanks so much, Maria. <laughs> Another super exciting thing coming up is our Grow Finances class. You can stream it on our website at bridgecitypgh.com on January 30th, starting at 9 a.m. Grow Finances is something where we can really just take a look at finances and bring uh, vision and change and hope to our finances. Mm -hmm. I know that I'll be there and I'm hoping I'll see you and some of our Bridge City friends there too. We're gonna transition into my favorite part of the worship experience, which is worship. Amen. Let's pray. So Heavenly Father, we just thank you that we get to worship you. Lord, we thank you that we don't have to neglect meeting together, but that we can come together in our different homes and yes. different cities, Lord, and just worship you, God. I just pray that in these next few minutes that our living spaces would become just places where your presence is just overwhelming us, Lord. Yes. That we get to worship you in spirit and in truth, Lord, and just become closer with you than ever before. Mm -hmm. God, I just thank you for all that you are and pray that we will become closer with you and look more like you as we worship you together. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. <laughs> hey, Bridge City, so excited you're here with us today. Let's worship together. Mountains are still being moved. Strongholds are still being loose. God, we believe it. Yes, we can see it. Wonders are still what you do. Mountains are still being moved. Strongholds are still being loose. God, we believe it. Yes, we can see it. Wonders are still what you do. Cause we are here for you. Come and do what you do. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. 
set our hearts on you to so come and do what you do cause we need a move oh we do yeah we need a move yeah we need Bodies are still being raised. Giants are still being slain. God, we believe it. Yes, we can see it. Wonders are still what you do. Yeah, we are here for you. Come and do what you do. We are here. Cause in the highlands 
in the heartache You're neither more or less inclined And I would search and stop at nothing You're just not that hard to find So I praise you on the mountain I will praise you in the mountains in my way You're the sun, you where my feet are So I praise you in the valleys all the same No less God within the shadows No less faithful when I least me
I'm Joel Paladin. And I'm Faith Paladin. And we attend the Brighton Heights campus. Before we got engaged, I had no debt at all. My wife. I had a lot of debt. <laughs> I had a car loan. I had some school debt. Just, I mean, it wasn't anything, like I didn't have tons of credit card or anything like that, but just the basic stuff that I feel like a lot of young people have coming right out of high school and college and stuff like that. She was working three jobs at one point doing what she had to do. But I don't think I was being like wise with my money. Nobody makes enough money. Yeah. And we felt like we didn't have enough money, obviously. Our expectations were different. Yeah. How we lived were different. And she took care of herself, really. And I mean, I lived with my parents. <laughs> it, was, it was tough. Yeah. So when we, we came together and our finances combined as one, uh, it, it got tough and it, yeah. it was a challenge, but you know, I think we've gotten through that. I think what brought us to that point um, of knowing that we needed something different was we were getting married and we knew that we wanted to set ourselves up for like a great future. I think committing though, like fully committing to the process is what just helped us just grow in not only our finances, but our relationship as well. One thing you learn in class is the snowball effect. And it's just, you gotta just knock out your debts as fast as possible. You know, you're, first you start with one and then you knock it out and then you double it, you double your next one. You use that money and you start rolling it in the next one and you snowball, you know, not worrying about how much money you're making, worrying about how fast you're getting rid of the money you owe. My biggest thing is knowing like, I don't make that much money, so I shouldn't be spending my money on this. I need to save, I need to, I shouldn't be buying a car that I can't afford. I should be buying a car that we can just pay for in cash and that, that'll work, you know? It allowed us to be able to just grow as a couple and allows us to be able to know that our future plans are provided for. It's allowed us to give more than our tithe, which, you know, we feel called to do. You know, when you go out to eat, being able to bless someone with a tip, uh, you know, recognizing that, you know, people have needs. Yeah. And we want to be able to give to even that too, you know, yeah. just going above and beyond what we are called to do. And we feel that's yeah. just what the decision we've made now in our lives or even earlier in our lives, you know, are setting us up for bigger rewards in the future. So. And just like caring about the community and knowing, again, like he said, like other people have needs too, and being able to reach out in that way um, can bless people and in turn bring them to Christ anyway. So that's like our main goal, mm -hmm. no matter what, so. One thing I'd say to someone who's struggling financially is you'll never have enough money. I can tell you right now, we didn't believe we had enough money to get started. I mean, I had a mediocre job and your faith was making close I to was even less, minimum so a mediocre wage. job. <laughs> um, it, it's tough. It's really hard to get started. It's really hard to make that commitment of, hey, we're gonna do this, we're gonna stay on this, and we're gonna trust in God, because it's, it's, it's scary. God just, he will bless you abundantly, even if it's not in a way that you think it would be like, oh, if I do this, I'm going to get a new car or I'm going to, you know, get a great house. No, it's like little things, you know, by being able to bless someone else. Church, it's such an honor to be here with you and worship with you. Even if we're apart, we can still be together and stay connected. So now we're going to give of our tithes and offerings. And Mary, I wanted to ask you, what's your favorite part about giving? Oh, that's such a good question, Maria. <laughs> My favorite part about giving, um, I've been reflecting recently, really is that it shows, it gives us the opportunity to show God that he's first in our life. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite things about getting my paycheck is being able to first give my tithes and offerings and show God that he comes first, even in my finances. I love that. Thanks, that's such a great question. Nice. So now get ready to hear the message from Pastor Rick. Hey parents, don't forget that we have a kid's experience at our website. Check it out today. Where the Monongahela and the Allegheny River join. That's where Pittsburgh was born 200 years ago. isn't just to get to heaven. Our goal here on earth is to bring heaven 
to earth. Welcome Bridge City Church once again. Here we are in an awesome series on what we do is spiritual. That's right, what we do is spiritual. You are all familiar with a GPS. You put in a destination and it tells you different routes to get there. It tells you the fastest route to get there. And so that's what we do. This year is very similar to that. If we can determine what we want this year to be in our lives, then we can put a destination in and God can direct us in how to get there. I like to think of a GPS as God's positioning system. Now, if we don't put a destination, God, this is what I want to see in my life. This is what I want to see in our lives together. Then the GPS is only going to do, well, the only thing it's going to do is tell us where we are. And I want to know where we are going. What we do is spiritual. Let's pick it up again in Acts chapter 20, and we've been launching every week with Acts chapter 20. So here we go, the Apostle Paul, and now I am bound, I am fastened, I am tied by the Spirit to go to Jerusalem. I don't know what awaits me, except that the Holy Spirit tells me that in city after city, jail and suffering awaits me. That's right, suffering, being in a tight space, being confined, having pressure applied to my life. That's right, I don't know what awaits us. I don't know what awaits you. I don't know what awaits all of us here, but I do know this. We need to get tied to the Holy Spirit and His purposes. That will make a difference. Let's go on in verse 24. But my life is worth nothing to me unless I use it for finishing the work assigned me by the Lord Jesus of telling others the good news about Jesus Christ. This is it. This is it. We have an assignment. We have a run. We have a race to run. But I want to talk to you today about finishing. We just came out of a great, great week of prayer and fasting and in, in, in hearing God and prayer in our Grow Power Conference and, and we all are attuned to spiritual things. So how can I keep and how can you keep these things going in your life? To finish is to complete, it's to accomplish, it's to carry through to the end. So how are we going to carry what we have into our future to get to where God wants us to go? Remember our assignment. Listen, it's not only to get to heaven, but it's to bring heaven to earth. We have to remember this, that we're all of our lives together really make a difference. So how can we? This is the big question here. This is it. How can we continue in what God began at the beginning of the year? And that's what I want to help you with right here. Now, let me just, let me just put it this way. Every day, every day, all of us have the same amount of time, 1,000 440 minutes. Let me ask you a question. How many of those minutes are used for spiritual purposes? As a believer in Christ, as a follower of Christ, every minute is spiritual. Everything we do is spiritual. That, that's, the big, that's the big idea here, that my whole life is spiritual. Everything matters. And so that being led by the Spirit is not a Sunday morning thing, it's a Monday through Saturday thing. It's something that we can, we can experience all the time. So what does it mean to be led by the Spirit? Let me give you my definition here. It's when we allow the Holy Spirit to influence, direct, and empower our lives. It's evidenced by God honoring decisions. That's how we know that we're spirit-led. We're making god honor decisions. We're making decisions according to the Word of God. That is the difference maker right there. So I want to let you know that led by the Spirit is only found two times in the Bible. Two times. Romans 8, 14, one of my favorite verses here. As many as are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God, are children of God. And I want to be a child of God, first and foremost. And if I want that, then I need to be led by the Spirit, led by the Spirit, allowing this Holy Spirit to influence, direct, and empower our lives, evidenced 
by God-honoring decisions. The second place is in Galatians 5, actually in 18. If you are led by the Spirit, you're not under the law. Earlier in that same text in Galatians, it states that let the Holy Spirit guide your life. Let the Holy Spirit guide us. Let the Holy Spirit move us. And this is a continual thing. It's not a one and done. It, the Holy Spirit's not a one and done deal. Hey, you get a little bit of Holy Spirit and that's it. No, no, no. It's a continual thing. It's a continual absolute filling. It's a continual shaping. It's a continual molding of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Ephesians 5, 18 and 19. Don't be drunk with wine because that will bring you to ruin. It will ruin your life. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourself and making music to the Lord in your hearts. Now, this, the context of this, when it says be filled with the Holy Spirit, is a continual filling of the Holy Spirit. It, it, means, it means there has to be an inflow. It means that, that when we're attuned to the Holy Spirit, it will affect every aspect of our lives. Now, I want to just make just a side note here. Why do we do praise and worship? Why do we, why do we sing songs together? Why do we have hymns and spiritual songs? And, and, and I encourage you to read the rest of these verses. Why do we submit one to another as well as a couple verses later? This is why, because in praise and worship and singing together and in worshiping, there's a filling of the Holy Spirit that's happened. That's why every week, for, for those of you that are home, we're urging you to participate because we want this to be a, a filling of the Holy Spirit time. That's so vital, so important to us. So it's an evidence and a pathway. It's an evidence of the Holy Spirit when we're singing songs, but it's also a pathway which we receive more of the Holy Spirit. We receive leading. We receive guidance. We receive, we receive so much unction from Him that leads our life. So the, the context of this is, 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 is I'm going to be filled with the Holy Spirit, transformed in every aspect of my life. And it's connected to worship. It's connected in submitting one to another. That's the big deal here. That's what this really is communicating to us. That, and that's the life that I want you to live. That's the life I want us to live together. Is I want us to together to have this experience with God that he's leading me in my workplace and everywhere that I am. Now, how did they do this in the book of Acts? Now, I want to let you know, faithfulness is not overrated. I like faithfulness. I like, I, many of us go to the same restaurant experiencing the same things because we like those restaurants because, why? Because they're faithful. They deliver consistently. They're consistently good. They consistently produce something. I mean, isn't that why we go to Chick-fil-A? Isn't that why we all go to Minio's Pizza? Isn't this why you go to your favorite place? Because it's faithful and it's good time after time. So what are we going to be faithful to to get us to where God wants us to be by the end of this year? Let's look to Acts chapter 2. Now this is right after they experienced the Holy Spirit in a very real and tangible way in leading their lives. The Holy Spirit's not just for a manifestation. The Holy Spirit's goal is to manifest in my life with a changed and transformed life that represents God, that, rep that represents this word here. So this is what they did. All the believers, that means all the believers, this is open to everyone devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper, that's communion, and to prayer. Now let's look at this word devoted. you got to catch this because just like we read in Ephesians, a continual, this is a continual, persistent thing. To continue to do something with intense efforts, with possible implication despite difficulty, it's staying in a fixed direction. That's what I want for you. In spite of what's going to happen in this year, in spite of what comes around the corner, in spite of the changes or setbacks or the promotions or whatever happens, we need to stay in a fixed direction. 
That's what I'm communicating to you. That's what they devoted themselves to. Four things they devoted themselves to. The Word of God, fellowship, communion, and prayer. Now, also in the book of Acts, I see a couple of other things. It was the birth of Jesus' church. So church was a very, very key thing that they devoted themselves to. But church is not just supposed to affect your spiritual life, it should affect your whole life. As a matter of fact, the more you're in love with Jesus, the better employee you should be. That's right, the better employee. You should go to work, and, and I'm urging you to do this, and, and, and go to work and, and let, let, let your boss know, I exist to make you a lot of money. That's why, that's why I'm here. I'm going to make you a lot of money. And, and, and at the end of your shift, if you're not tired, if you're not worn out from giving all you have to your workplace, you should offer to give money back. See, that's a changed and transformed lifestyle that I'm not serving my boss, I'm serving God. I'm not just serving my family. I'm, listen, I'm serving God by the way I love and care for my family. That's the big deal here. That's what we're trying to do is get to that spirit, spiritual life. This is not just a, a connection, small group or church or, 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 or when you're praying for your meals idea. No. How many minutes belong to God in every day? Come on, 1,440. That's how many minutes belong to God. That's how many we're going to give him. That's how many we're going to surrender to him and let, let him uh, coordinate our lives and direct our lives. So here we have in the book of Acts, they continued in these things. And if we want to take what just happened in our lives, spiritually speaking, and continue, we need to devote ourselves to the same thing that they did. Now, in the book of Acts, they were looking back on what happened over 30 years. And this is what the consistency of their lives. May, at the end of this year, we look back and say, we committed ourselves to these things and God did great and wonderful things in our life. That, that's what I want. That's the story I want to tell. And I'm excited about it. If you were to go on in those verses, they, in, in verse 43, a, d- a deep sense of awe came on them. And believers were together in one place. And in verse 46, they worshiped together. But not only this, not only that, listen, listen. Not only did they worship together, but many other people became followers of Jesus as a result of them devoting themselves because everything they did was spiritual. You see, let me give you a concept here. God sets us free, not only to be free, but he sets us free. It's it's, it's not to be free from something. It's to be free for something. Big change there. See, most of us are focused on getting free from something. But what I want to change is, no, God wants me to get set free for something, to demonstrate him. And everywhere I go, in kids' activities, talking with friends, everywhere I go, then we're not holier than thou. We're, we're able to relate and we're able to connect and we're able to do these things. That's the big deal there. So there's two questions, two questions all of us need to be able to answer. What's God saying to me? What's God saying to my church? Because this is the big idea the last three weeks. I want to be in alignment with my assignment. And I, if I want to stay, if I want to be aligned to my assignment, it's going to take these four things, the word of God, it's going to take prayer, it's going to take other people in my life, it's going to take, it's going to take fellowship, real fellowship that honors God, and I'm going to get into how we hear God, but listen, church, 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 we need to be attentive to what is God saying to us. We need to be attentive to him. We need to grab a hold of that because that gets us in alignment. John 10, 27, red letters, Jesus' words here. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. See, hearing God's voice, it's the birthright of every believer. That's right, if I belong to God, and and Jesus used this term a lot, he's the shepherd, we're his sheep, then we have the birthright to know his voice. Isn't that exciting? We don't have to wonder about it, but we can hear God's voice. We can know his voice. And I want to tell you, even if you don't know the voice of God right now, I want to tell you that we're going to help you learn the voice of God. Because hearing the voice of God individually and corporately 
And, and we, we miss the corporate aspect that helps us be in alignment. Church, I want us to be in alignment to our assignment at Bridge City Church. That's why we got to see our whole lives as spiritual. Everything about my life is spiritual. If we were half as obsessed with what God is saying with, as we are with our cell phones, we, we would be just fine. We would just be, we would be just fine. Or half as much as what, what political party is saying this, or what does the news say, or what does this news say. No, I want to get, I want to get captivated by what is God communicating to us. So, th so th that's the big idea. Now, now listen, most of us start off trying to hear God and learn what he's saying like this. We're asking big questions. God, what are you doing in the world? God, what are you doing? You know, uh, wh where do you want me to live? And what, what job? And we're asking these big questions. Let me give you some starter questions to help you get in alignment to your assignment. Let me give you some starter questions. I think, I think that would help us. Here's one. What sin, what sin, God, is keeping me from knowing you more. <laughs> How about asking that question? See, these are starter questions that you're going to hear. You're going to begin to see things when you're reading and when you're talking to God that are going to come off the page and they're going to, they're going to light you up in a great way. Or how, how, God, can I get to know you more? That's a great question. How can I know you more, God? See, these are the questions God's, God wants to, he wants to answer. He's longing to answer. How can I grow to be more like you? In what ways can I be your hands and your feet? <laughs> That's a great starter question. These are the things, this is how God wants to guide us and lead us here. How do you see me right now, God? Oh, that's a good question. Oh, write that one down. God, how do you see me right now? And be ready for a great response. Because a lot of times I look at my life and I'm, woe is me, I'm down, I'm missing it, I'm falling short. And God says, you're my, you're my, you're my son, oh, I'm well pleased. Wow, see, that's how God sees me. And it changes my perspective. And how about this last one? How can I use this life? How can I use my life, God, for your glory? How can I use my life for your glory? God is always wanting to speak to us. Are we listening? It reminds me, uh, uh, a while back, I got on a flight, and I was heading to New Orleans. And I got on my flight. I knew where I was going. I was going to New Orleans. Got, sat down, got my books out, got everything situated, um, you know, got buckled up, made sure everything was good, and I just put my head down. I began reading. I began writing. I began you know, getting busy with what I'm going to use this time wisely on the flight. And, uh, and, and, and then the stores got, got, got on like they always do and said a few comments. And, and to be honest, I was just lost in what I was doing. And she said a few other things. And then she said, well, welcome this morning to flight. And she gave a number. And she said, on our way, our next destination is Little Rock, Arkansas. Well, I want to let you know, I knew where I was going. I was heading to New Orleans. But she said, Little Rock, Arkansas, and my head shot up. And I went, how did I get on the wrong flight? And then all of a sudden, I, I looked, you know how you look over the seats in the airlines and everybody else's heads were popping up and everybody's looking for their ticket and everybody's wondering what just happened. And then she, then she stopped and she said, now that I have your attention, I have some important things I want you to say. What I want to say to you, we're headed to New Orleans. And relief came over my, my life. Okay, I'm headed to the right destination. <laughs> but you know what? I, I listened to every word that lady had to say that day. I listened to every word because I didn't want to miss one because I knew where I was going now. I was on the right, right, right place. But this is what happens with God. He's always speaking, but we're not listening. We have our head down. We're distracted. Oh yeah, I think I know where I'm going. I think I know the destination, but I'm challenging you. If we want to get to the destination God wants for us, we need to be in alignment with our assignment. Now I'm going to give you some ways we can hear God speaking because God wants to speak to you. He wants to speak to me. He wants to speak to all of us. Here we go. Number one, the word of God. The word of God, it's alive and powerful. It's sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword. That's right, sometimes I'll be just reading the Bible. I'm just reading and something just begins to nudge me. Something begins to prompt inside of me. Why? Because every time I sit down in my morning time, I sit, I sit with God and I just start reading and I say, God, speak to me through your word. Show me what you want me to get today. As a matter of fact, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 has been lighting me up. 
I didn't go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2 to study it, but as I was reading through Corinthians, chapter 2, just, it just lit me up. As a matter of fact, it's what I shared at the power conferences. It's so important that I want to see a demonstration and I want to have an expectation of the evidence and the pathway of the Holy Spirit evidence, which is to change and transform lives and seeing God do great things. See, that happened. I wasn't even looking for it. I just, just as I was reading through, something sparks. That is God. That is God speaking to me. God, and I, so I want to align myself with the Word of God. So when He's nudging me, I'm reading the Word about forgiveness, and somebody comes to mind, I haven't forgiven, that's the Holy Spirit speaking to me. And the Holy Spirit sometimes speaking to us and, and, and helping us in our life through the Word of God. Okay, here's the next one here. How about prayer? Prayer. That's right, talking with God. Prayer is supposed to be a two-way communication. That's right, I speak, I'm I'm, I'm communicating to God. He communicates back with me. That's what we do. That's how this works, two-way. And God wants to speak to us. As a matter of fact, He wants to speak to us much more than we give Him credit for. That's right, that's right. God, I I love this quote, God doesn't have a speaking problem, we have a hearing problem. We have a listening problem. That's right. Now, there's this illustration in 1 Kings 19. And many times, we're looking for the the grandiose. We're looking for big signs. We're looking for big communications from God. And the little ones are all around us. I love it when God just whispers in that still, small voice. Because you know, He whispers in that still, small voice. He's not trying to get everybody's attention. He's trying to get my attention. He's trying to get our attention. I love it when that happens. And here we have Elijah. And and, and, and as Elijah stood there, the Lord passed by. And a mighty windstorm hit the mountain. It was such a terrible blast. And rocks were shaken loose. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, there was an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. He was in the still, small voice. What's interesting, let me tell you how God moves. I wrote this verse down in my notes. I was meditating on it. I was really excited about it. Wouldn't you know, I was on a, I was on a phone call with somebody I haven't spoken to in years. It, the, the, the very night I wrote this down, and that person said, I think, I, I just wanted to tell you something I've been thinking about for you. And I'm like, for me? And it was this verse, that in the midst of everything being shaken loose in our culture, in the midst of the windstorm, there's a windstorm of chaos right now in our culture, God wants to give us a still, small voice. That's right. It's an impression. It's, it, it, it can be a picture. It can be a word. It can be an image. It can be anything like that that's drawing me closer to God. How do we know it's God? I'm going to get to this in just a little bit. But if I'm hearing something that agrees with God's word, first of all, and agrees with those around me, and brings me to be more like Jesus, well, I, I think that's God. That's God. That's God speaking to you because the devil's not going to speak to you. The devil's not going to communicate to you to be more like Jesus. He's going to draw you away from God's purposes. He's going to draw you away from God's word. He's going to draw you away from God's people, away from singing spiritual songs and hymns and submitting to one another. The devil's going to pull you away from that, not draw you into that. That's right. Come on. This is vitally, vitally important here. Um, This is how God speaks. Um, Our missions offering this past uh, December, my wife and I, we already gave our missions offering earlier in December. But as we were listening and watching the video, God prompted my heart that we need to give again. So I looked at my wife and I said, honey, I think we need to give, babe. We need to give. We got to give to this offering. And she said, I feel the same thing. (gasps) Two people, two of us, we said the same thing. I, I I said, okay, you get a number and I'll get a number. So she prayed. She got a number. She wrote it down. I got a number and wrote it down. We said, okay, one, two, three. We said, we had the same number. That's God speaking. That's God bringing alignment to my family. God wants to bring alignment to your family. He wants to bring alignment to our, to our lives. And when we ask him, he will with that still small voice. Ways we hear God. Here's one, church. That's right, through church, and this is why church is so vitally important, we hear God. Now, first of all, in relationships, people. 
I get the perspective of God. I get the counsel of God. Come on, I get encouraged by God's people here. Proverbs 24, 6, don't go to war without wise guidance. Victory depends on having many advisors. And that's not talking about a plurality of, you know, 20, 30 people telling you what to do. That means we got to hear good advice. We got to hear people that love us and are committed to us and know us well enough they can communicate these things to us. So I hear God through one another. When I sit down, when I sat down this past week and I did it, I took my RPMs from two weeks ago. I sat down with somebody and I did it myself. I reviewed them and they gave me counsel. They gave me help because I'm going to go to war this year with my life. This is going to be the most focused time of my life. And if I'm going to do that, I need help. And I received that through somebody. Now here's ways we hear God, the church. How about the prophetic personally and corporately? That's right, a spiritual gift is given so that we can help each other. That's right, to one gives good advice, wise advice, to another a special message of knowledge, a special knowledge. One who prophesies strengthens others, encourages them, and comforts them. So there's a prophetic, which just means speaking forth God, and we hear the voice of God. That's right, I want to hear the prophetic, what God is communicating to my life and us. It's never a substitute for what I'm hearing. It's to add to what God's doing in my life so I can see all of my life lining up for God. That is so, so exciting. Now here's one, ways we hear God through the church, through the preaching of the word. 1 Thessalonians 2, 13. Therefore, we never stop thanking God that when you received his message from us, you didn't think of our, of our words as mere human ideas. That's right. Am I giving you human ideas? Catch this. Catch this. You accepted what we said as the word of God. And that's what I'm urging you to do. That's what I'm urging us to do through the preaching. Decide, is it man's word or is it God's word? Is God speaking to us because we have a covenant relationship? We have it together, that we're all in this together and we're accomplishing something for Him. And we're not just free from something, but we're free for God and we're free to demonstrate Him. Isn't that so powerful? Continues to work. That's what I want to see, see here. And His Word continues to work. That's a word, energy. That's where we get the Word. When you receive this, this, this preaching, when you receive the preaching of the Word, there's an energy it produces. And that's what I want you to have. That's what I want us to have when it continues to work. And so that's why we take notes. That's why I'm urging you to take notes. I'm urging you to take these scriptures. Is this God speaking to you for your benefit? Listen, I'm not here to give you information. I'm here to see a transformation of lives, a transformation of family trees, a transformation of finances, a transformation of everything about our lives for God. Because what we do is spiritual. Here we go. Ways we hear God. How about through circumstances? Circumstances. Um, wow. 1 Corinthians 16, Paul had opposition. And so he had to figure out what was God saying through circumstances. That's right. Exodus 3, Moses had an experience with the burning bush. And he had to figure out what's God saying through the circumstance. What's God communicating through the circumstance? That was, that was huge. So when we go through circumstances like they did in the book of Acts, they continually ask God what he thinks. Because what's God, what God is doing in me is more important than what God and than what is happening to me. What's happening in me is more important than what is happening to me. Big, big deal there. Circumstances are a way that God gets our attention. Ask God, what are you doing? That is so vitally, vitally important. Listen, as long as there are tests in school, there will always be prayer in school. <laughs> People always say, they took prayer out of school. I said, no, they didn't. They still have tests. And trust me, as long as there are tests, there's going to be young people praying. That's the way this works. I, I, know how this, I know how this goes down. That's the truth. So how do you know it's from God? How do you know it's from God? What's going on? How do you know you're hearing God? How, many, how do you know if the word of God in deep fellowship and connection in, in the communion that we have from God and the prayer and the circumstances in our church, how do we know if it's from God? 
That's a big question. First of all, I, I alluded to this earlier. Does it, does it agree with the Word of God? Anything that doesn't agree with the Word of God, we, we, nope. Does it agree with those who are above me, who I'm accountable to, who, 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 who I report to, who, who I'm submitted to? Does it agree with them? They, are they saying this is a Word of God? Are they saying this is, this is God speaking? Does it make sense in this timing? This timing in my life, does it really make sense? Is it, does it, it, or is it a timing thing that I need to put off? Is it drawing me closer to God? Is it making me, my faith grow? Is it making me, making me connect to Him deeper? I have, I have many people tell me, God's telling me to just leave the church and, and not get involved anywhere. Oh, that's not God. That the devil brings division and destruction. Jesus came that you would have life. And we hear God's word together. That's not, that's not God. It doesn't agree with his word. It doesn't agree with what's best for your life. No, that, that, that can't be. That, that can't be in our life. So that's how we know. So this week, I want, to, I want you to posture your life. I want you to posture yourself to, to be in tune and to get in alignment with your assignment. That's right, with the word of God with others, being connected to others. That's so vitally important. We need one another. And even if you're online, even if you're, even if you're at home and you may feel stuck at home, you need others in your life. Pick up the phone, do some FaceTime, get on a Zoom call. Come on, come on, watch what's happening. Get connected. Come on, this is not a time to sit back. This is a time to lean forward. This is a time to get in alignment with our assignment. And I'm gonna leave you with two thoughts here. Two thoughts I want you to catch. In John chapter 4, in John 4, Jesus was communicating to the woman at the well that anybody who, who drinks this water, that he has living water, come on, what they're going to have is a fresh bubbling spring within them leading to eternal life. And that's right, when we taste of the water, when we taste of what Jesus Christ has, it's a bubbling spring within us. That's right, that's what we have when I take care of myself. I have a bubbling spring. That means there's a source within you and there's a source within me that demonstrates Jesus Christ. And that's great, but too many people stop there. They stop there. And where God wants us to move is this. Let me tell you, God wants us to get to John chapter 7, 37. On the last day of the festival, Jesus stood and shouted, anyone who's thirsty, come to me. I don't know about you, but I'm thirsty right now. I'm thirsty to see God do something in every aspect of my life, with every one of my children, with my finances, with every part of my life. I'm hungry. I'm thirsty. And come on. And he says, okay, if you're thirsty, come to me. Anybody who believes in me may come and drink. For the scriptures declare, rivers of living water are going to flow from his heart. See, what I want us to do as a church, that what we do as spiritual, is go from a bubbling little spring to rivers of living water. That's right, that there's rivers of living water for other people. That We're not going to live selfishly. We're not going to live in consumption mode, but we're going to live in contribution mode. We're going to live in declaration mode. We're going to live in distribution mode to say, God, what you're doing in us is spiritual. What you're doing really matters. What you're doing really, I want other people to connect to this. And I want to be in alignment with my assignment because what we do is spiritual i listen i would be remiss in not closing like this and this is this, this is it this is it i'm winding down here listen if you don't have a date a moment or a time where you tasted of that living water if you don't have a moment if you don't have a time where you tasted the living water of jesus christ that you entered into a relationship with him. I want to communicate with you right now. You can do that. Jesus came not only for the whole world, but he came for you. He died on the cross, not for the whole world's sin, but he died for yours as well. Yours and mine, because we're a part of this world. And this is how we do it. We say, God, I have sinned. I've missed the mark. I haven't, I, 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 I'm not in right relationship with you, but I'm urging you right now. I'm urging you right where you are to stop everything. And ask yourself, do you have a date, a moment, or a time that Jesus Christ became the forgiver of your past and the leader to your future? If you don't have that, I want to offer you it right now. It, it, it comes by, by that saying, God, I want you to forgive me of my sin and I want you to 
lead me into my future. I want you to be in charge. That's the best thing I could ever offer to you because you know what? That's not the finish line. That's the starting line. We're going to continue in a journey. We're going to continue. We're going to continue to help you to grow. We're going to help you. We're going to help you discern what God is saying and how you can live on assignment, fulfilling your destiny. That's where I want you to live. So Heavenly Father, I pray for every person right now that listen to this. I pray, God, that this weak, Lord God. They're going to experience you in a real way. I pray that they're going to experience you like never before, Father. And I pray that they're going to get in alignment with your assignment, Lord God. And I pray, Father, that their destiny is going to unfold for you. And Father, those that are listening right now that don't have a day and don't have a time and don't have a moment, may this be their moment where they say, God, forgive me and God, lead my life. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. This has been an awesome, awesome time with you. I hope that you're built up and encouraged. And if it encouraged you, make sure that you tell others. And because we want to encourage them too. We want them to receive the word of God like never before. Thanks so much for spending this time with me. Thanks so much, Pastor Rick, for such an awesome message. I know I'm excited to implement some of those things this week. Me too, honestly. So Pastor Rick ended with a prayer, and if that was your first time praying it to receive Jesus or rededicate your life to Christ, let us know. Click the I Want to Know Jesus button or hop in one of the Zoom rooms using the Zoom link provided in the chat. The Zoom room. I know, I still I love, love it. I love it so much. <laughs> Thanks so much for being here, church. Honestly, we know there's so many other things you could be doing on a Sunday morning. You could still be sleeping, but you're here with us, and we really appreciate it. So we love you, and have a good week. Amen. See you next time.